We're back. Uh, day two of working on the Beams engine. The goal for today, of course, is to try and get this engine uh, prepped and hopefully get it back in the car. Uh, don't know for sure if we'll have it running today, but uh, that's the goal. time to focus on engine number two. Uh, again, if you guys remember, the only change that we did make is the Total Racing cam gears and belt, and we locked the cam timing, so he's going to get these off and uh, be putting on the Total Racing stuff pretty soon. And we adjust the valve clearance. Steve is taking all of the actual valve buckets out. Uh, what is it that you're actually doing right now? So this is under shim. And most of the Ferrari motors that I normally work on are over shim. That's where the shim is on top of the bucket. This one, the shim is just underneath the bucket on the inside. And you can see there's a little round receiver and the spring retainer to keep the shim in place. And basically what I'm doing is I'll take all the shims out and write down the measurements of all of them with my micrometer. And then after that, we are going to open up the, all the intakes to about 12 thousandths and all of the exhaust to 18. Why are you doing that? Because they get hotter with a turbo. And because of the increase in heat and the fact that titanium has a very high expansion of uh, 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 thermal expansion, um, basically what we're doing is we're making sure that when the valves themselves get hot, they don't grow enough to where they have no clearance and are held open. Martin has decided to go ahead and use the uh, intake manifold that was on the spare engine. Uh, it's black instead of the original factory gray. That his was, um, but the biggest difference is it doesn't have chunks of his pistons inside it, so that's a plus. We will keep the other one, uh, it's over there, and clean it out eventually and add that as a spare if anything ever happens to this one, if we ever have a danger to manifold type deal. <laughs> So that's about it for the day. Uh, you guys can kind of see the progress we've made on prepping this engine. Um, tomorrow we're going to come in and set the cam timing with the Toto Racing gears. And then uh, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow we'll uh, maybe have this thing back in. Martin got in first this morning and the uh, first thing he did was make the modification here so that he can uh, run external oil coolers. Steve's got his timing wheel on already. We're going to be setting the cam timing in a little bit. Toto gears are on. Martin and Steve have got the new Beams engine pretty much totally prepped and uh, we're going to go ahead and take it off the engine stand and have it on the hoist ready to, uh, ready to put it in the car.
So the engine is prepped, the transmission is on, uh, but we're gonna call it for the day. Our buddy over at JSP Fab is gonna come uh, Monday morning and is gonna put a reverse lockout uh, to make that downshift to second uh, more consistent. Um, even just one time of over revving it, trying to get it in a second and then clutch, clutch dumping uh, could be a problem. So we're gonna try and avoid that this time and uh, we'll see you guys then. So we're back, it is day three of doing the beams engine swap. We uh, have our buddy John from JSP over. He's gonna be helping us install his reverse lockout kit. Um, if you guys remember, just like I said, uh, just before Martin blew this up, he actually did miss second on one of his initiation flicks. And uh, you know, if you miss second and think you're in and then clutch dump, you can pretty easily over rev your engine, which actually may be uh, what caused that valve float and uh, caused the valve to break. So uh, JSP has designed this reverse lockout kit uh, that should stop it from going too far over and being uh, easier to not miss second gear. Oh yeah, that's nice. So oh, he's, he's got guide. It. Lock this in with this. Yeah, so that'll go down, right. down the center. Right. You can adjust the height on the shifter. Sure. Tighten the set screw. Okay. And then this goes on top. Cool. Yeah. Today we're installing the JSP reverse lockout shifter on Martin's car. Uh, the benefits of this shifter include a shorter throw. Um, it's a ball bearing movement instead of a rubber insulated movement and it has a reverse lockout feature that prevents misshifting into the reverse gate when you're downshifting from third gear into second gear. So the kit includes a couple of pieces. We have an adapter bracket that mounts our shifter onto the J160 transmission into the original location for this setup. And then on top of that the shifter can mount in two separate positions. So this position that we have it currently mounted in is the most rearward mounted position. But if you flip this lower lever assembly, then you can also move the shifter about an inch further forward for different fitments in different vehicles. So the shifter assembly itself consists of a few different components. The first is a machined aluminum mounting base. And this is what houses the bearing assembly for the rotation of the shifter. Uh, the center part of the shifter is also an aluminum casing, but it has another bearing assembly on the inside, uh, and the whole assembly is hard anodized coated for durability. The reverse lockout mechanism of the shifter involves a spring assembly inside of this mechanism that, when you push down the shifter, allows a locking pin to bypass the locking plate and allow you to go into reverse gear. The locking plate is adjustable for different positions in cars and is also machined from stainless steel so it's durable, uh, it won't corrode or rust, and it's also replaceable if it wears out. So now that we've shown you the uh, reverse lockout kit, we're going to go ahead and throw the engine and transmission in the car and uh, get the shifter installed and that way Martin can kind of feel it out.
So the engine is in. Martin is gonna go ahead and get underneath the car and put the transmission mount on. Um, it's actually one of the first things you wanna do so that way you can you know, focus on the engine. We got the engine mounts in. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the shifter mechanism. It's just like a lot of people in drift like those two spoke wheels. I couldn't, you couldn't put one of those on my car. I love those. That's all I put in every car. See, there you go. It's just like a different personal preference. Yeah. The actual rod has an adjustable length here on the top that he made. And uh, Martin can kind of set the length to where he, you know, likes it before he actually puts the knob on. Smooth. I mean, does that feel better, you think, on going down the second where it's not going to go? Yeah. I mean, because you can actually hit it. Yeah. Before, I was just... So Martin's got the header back on and the turbo back on. Uh, we are still going to be running the same boost uh, and everything on this turbo. Luckily, like we said, the turbo is still good. Uh, Steve is currently in the car checking all the data from the you know, last time we went to the track. Uh, he basically will have the last 25 minutes that the car was running. Um, we did see a couple of over revs where it was actually going to like 8,300 RPM, even though the actual limiter is at 8,000. So what we think is happening Here's is that... Right here. This is 8,127. So why we think the over revs are happening is that we actually upgraded to the Toda lightweight chromoly flywheel. And uh, the low inertia of the flywheel is allowing the engine to over rev just on momentum. There's not enough inertia on the flywheel to stop the engine from carrying the you know, cylinder pressure and over revving itself on clutch kicks. So we're kind of hoping as well that the reverse lockout on the new shifter will allow Martin to, you know, smoothly transition from third to second and no longer have that over revving from that. We might also add a clutch switch and have a different uh, rev limiter set for when the clutch is being pushed in versus not. And uh, hopefully that fixes our issue. John is going to get out of here. So thank you for your help, my friend. And uh, we'll see you next time. Martin has got the engine and everything else put back in the car, and we are about to start her up. Um, but before we do that, Steve wanted to do one quick thing. Just give me a minute, I'll set the throttle shop. trying to make sure that it developed oil pressure. Uh, it took a second, but the oil pressure has showed up now. And uh, everything's in the greens. We're looking good. So, seems to be running good. Less than a week and a half after we sadly blew it up, it is back up and running so we're we're pretty happy with that and uh we're gonna button it all up and hopefully take it for a little test Ready? martin and i are going to go for a quick uh, test ride make sure this thing drives the way he's expecting this thing works out mm.
the 14 is back up and running again. Congrats on getting Yay. it running. Yay. Shout out again to Chance for the spare engine. And uh, thank you to JSP for the uh, shifter. We'll make sure we're going to put both of those to good use. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we're going to have this thing out at Grange again on the 29th. So uh, hopefully you guys will see some footage then. And uh, we'll see you then.